What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? It is League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you guys for a red hot banger breaking news alert something. We've been speculating, it's been in the rumor talks for a long time. The CB Low LCS LLA merger is happening, and apparently, it actually goes a whole lot deeper than Mark. We got the three split changing. We got Fearless coming. We got a Pacific League coming in. This is just bombs after bombs that the LCS is talking about. The LCS CP LOL LLA combination is only the tip of the spear Whew. for Riot with this charge that they are launching today with a uh, barrage of news that have come through, setting up what is going to be a wildly different 2025 for the competitive League of Legends scene. Ton to get into, but I think obviously the best place and most important place for us to start is going to be talking about the new LCS, the new CB LOL, LLA, America's uh, conferences. Yeah, so it's getting broken up into two conferences. It sounds like the North and South Conference. North is going to have six LCS teams, which... There's obviously still a lot more information we're talking about and need to get from Riot. Are we axing two LCS teams? Two more? Going to be hitting the wayside? Kind of sounds like it because alongside those six, you're getting an LLA squad and then there's going to be a guest spot, which this is the most exciting part for me. Relegation coming back. You have both the NACL and the LRN, which is the tier two league from the Latin American scene that are going to be kind of battling through relegation and promotion for that eighth and final spot. But the entire LLA scene is basically being taken down to like a team, maybe two teams. One of the things that we were aware of when these rumors, these ideas about an America's conference was coming through, and especially after seeing what was going to happen over in Southeast Asia, watching uh, Oceania, watching the LJL join up as well type of thing, and realizing that, yes, there are positives to these situations, which we can get to, but one of the cons, one of the negatives, is someone is losing out. Someone is not getting their representation in the same type of way as they've already existed and had. And that is the LLA losing these spots, losing these numbers. And it's one of those ones where, yes, you know, you can make an argument and you can look at the data and find a way to justify these type of things. But I think there's also just as much of a case where you can find these passionate fans, passionate numbers that would say otherwise. So that is one of those negatives that come through. But as you mentioned, there is a pretty big pro, pretty big positive that is coming through with these changes as well. And that is that promotion, relegation, guest team spot in these conferences. We can talk about, you know, six, you know, six LCS teams and six CB LOL teams and the LLA team, LLA team. And then you roll into that guest team spot. And I think that is absolutely one of those ones where what we have seen, kind of the grassroots efforts of the NACL and, and teams, you know, partnering up like the Disguise Toast situation, getting one of those creeping in through and rising through and, and bringing that uh, type of, you know, new fire, new passion into that league. Absolutely something that I'm in favor for seeing in the conferences. Yeah, it gives something a whole lot more for these tier two leagues to play for, to have that potential to get promoted up to tier one. Uh, less information about the South Conference, but I assume it's the same format where you're going to have six CB LOL teams and then a Latin American, uh, an LLA team, and then an LRN, maybe NACL. I can't see the NACL team being on the South Conference. So it's probably just LRN. But for the most part, it's still going to be the CB LOL, Southern Conference playing regionally, the Northern Conference LCS playing regionally. I know we had kind of talked about is Brazil just going to move to L.A.? Because that seems insane, but not necessarily going to be the case. But then that gets up to gets us to now three splits potentially happening. So most of the regular season going to happen in the CB Lull and LCS respectively. And as these brackets move forward, it sounds like you're going to have then the America's clash for the right to represent internationally and then have some CB Lull versus LCS maybe in finals or a playoff type of bracket. And that leads us into one of the other announcements, the changes that was was laid out, is that we are all moving to that three-split schedule. Not just the LEC going to be on spring, you know, uh, winter, spring, summer. We're all moving to that type of territory because there is a brand new international event in town rolling on in at the end of that starting split. And that is where you laid out for the Americas. We're having that matchup between the LCS, CB Lowell, 
uh, somewhere down that bracket line, we're getting that clash. And that is where we are finally seeing who is going to be the representative for the Americas, that one squad going through. And that's the important thing to look at at this new international event. You start with that regional play to decide it all out, but you are only sending one representative to this event, five, five teams heading through total. I don't know how they're that's working. It's a weird that one bracket. <laughs> the other wrinkle to that whole event is it is the fearless draft international event to kick it all off the regional best ofs and the international best of part of this one is all fearless draft yeah so this new international event we don't know the name we don't know much information about it other than five teams one per region fearless draft as you mentioned and it's going to be march it sounds like uh at least you know maybe you have this first buildup of the spring split and then you're having an early international event which they've mentioned that's going to push msi back it's usually in may as we know going to be pushed back to july ish tentatively riot is saying which i don't know if these splits are going to be shorter now that we're doing three of them they must be because if msi is happening in july then you'd have to push back worlds unless these splits are significantly shortened and, and as someone who has been fortunate enough to attend some of these Worlds events, the, you know, either the semifinals to all the way to the finals in person, I'll tell you, pushing it back any further from that end of October. We're playing in December November, now? <laughs> you don't want to be outside as a fan. I can't imagine being out there as the player. That would not be the situations that you would be looking for. You'd have to change some things, maybe, you know, looking in an indoor or whatever situation. But these are all the type of questions, all the type of answers that you got to come up with now with these changes that are coming on through to the scheduling. I think the other one that is important, as you laid out, is that MSI difference. That's one I think is going to hit people a lot differently, having that come through into that June-July territory as opposed to that early May, you know, beginning of June that we have been able to get with that tournament. I think that's certainly going to feel different uh, to a lot of people and to the scheduling and where you're ramping up, where you're focusing, where you're investing your time for these organizations. And... I mean, yeah, it's going to be a huge change for all these organizations, this new format. And I mean, it feels like the season's going to be even longer, so maybe burnout will be a potential thing. But getting the international event that people wanted, people have been calling for these Americas uh, League joining together. I know people from the CB Law might not be as happy because they've been breaking viewership numbers and investing, doing great on their own. And it kind of feels like the LCS is like, uh, hey, brother, can we get a little bit of that action, a little bit of that viewership and rivalry going? Which is completely fair, I think, for the CB Lowell fans to have that type of view and to realize and, 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 you know, should have that type of pride in their own region and in the product that they have been able to build up as the CB Lowell. Part of it also has to acknowledge and recognize what you are gaining in this situation, because you might say there are these cons, there are these negatives, there are things that you are not in favor of. I think there are some things that are just regardless, you know, uh, you're not able to argue that they are not positives for this CB Lowell. Still keeping that guaranteed world spot, of course, very important. The second one is you're looking at there is no way you're going to tell me that just staying in the CB low, grinding it out against the talent and the uh, competition that you have there is not going to be, uh, it wouldn't have been worse than going up against where you're going with the LCS and the type of challenges that you will face there. Even, yes, I know talking LCS challenges is not the best to everybody but it still will represent a rise up in talent, will represent a rise up in resources poured into these organizations. It will be that uphill challenge that we want to see from the CB Lowell. And I think a lot of people should realize the CB Lowell is ready for this type of challenge to storm on in and be competitive right out of the gate. And listen, it sounds like with this format, you're talking Worlds and MSI, depending on how these cross North-South conference plays go, the CB Law can steal an MSI and a World Seed from the LCS where you could potentially only have two North American teams heading to Worlds. That, to me, is the spiciest thing about all this. If that is one of the paths that we end up down, and it absolutely is a believable path. You know, you could clearly see a path to get one of the top teams from the CB Law to come through and grab that top spot, and all it takes is a bad day, a mistake, and a best a of series. A FlyQuest performance at MSI, and... <laughs> Well, don't remind me, because that is certainly a path to get two teams from the CB Law moving on through to represent the America's conferences at these international events. It is a wild time that we've got in store for us, possibly.
So, so full big picture now, just beyond the LCS America's League, I feel like what this does is it really makes everything streamlined in the entire esports ecosystem for the league because now everyone's going to be on this kind of three split format with three different international events that you're playing towards they slowly build up with more and more teams and stakes on the year great worlds is still the big grand finale and now you have five regions five whether or not you want to call them major regions, it does get a bit confusing when you have PCS, VCS, LLA, LJL. You had all these different regions because now you just have Korea, China, the European League, now the Americas, which is obviously South America and NA. And now we've hardly even talked on the Asia Pacific League where we're combining the VCS, PCS, uh, the Oceana OPL League is getting pulled back into the mix, so it should really only strengthen these minor regions because now they're playing against some, some more of these top tier leagues. I think it's one of those things that we saw, uh, you know, last year when they did an initially start adding, you know, the LJL and the uh, you know Oceanic League into what was going on with the VCS in that area. But it was one of those things where you looked at it and you had to acknowledge that, yes, maybe there are some shortcomings. Yeah, maybe there are some teams, some organizations that are getting a little bit, uh, you know, uh, done wrong compared to what they had before. But from the fan perspective and the fan engagement in these matches and watching it, the metrics are up. They're definitely up for these reasons and what you're seeing. And that's one of the reasons why you can get this type of motivation, this type of push from Riot to make these type of moves. And that's where we see it. In the Americas, when we get this type of conference, and that's where you're seeing them ex further expanding what they were doing with the Asian Pacific Conference as well. And, you know, especially with the debacle that the VCS has had recently with all oh, the yeah. betting and having to ban so many guys, just kind of, yeah, we'll be done with that league. You just come into this Asia Pacific one. But it's going to be much easier to follow these events throughout the calendar year. And honestly, it should make for the teams that do qualify for these international events they should be at even a higher level than we've seen in years past. And I think that the best thing for me is that we're, you know, synchronizing the schedules all across the regions yes. as you laid out before, specifically, you know, uh, someone like you or I doing this type of job, this type of focus, this type of career, you having them all on the same page is going to be that benefit. Well, having the LEC always on this uh, different type of schedule has been this outlier, this black sheep. That has, you know, sometimes disrupted They were just things. ahead of their time, waiting for everyone else ahead. to come in. They were, but the big important thing for me is it felt almost worthless to have those three splits of the LEC and do nothing in between, really, that first and second split. Now we have that international fearless draft event right in between those two splits, and everybody is on that same schedule, everybody on that same page. That is a big plus for me. The LEC crawled so that everyone else could walk. And then maybe by 2026, the whole globe will be running at the esports events. <laughs> just just maybe. Just maybe we'll get there. That maybe a couple thing. years longer than that. You, know? you got to be careful because this is one of those ones starting all on the same page. And all it takes is one little tree branch and someone's path to stumble. And then they got to set it back. And then we're all sorts of jumbled all over again. But at the initial set forth, this type of plan, I'm putting my check mark on it. And listen, don't give Riot credit often, but the last couple of years, the reformatting to MSI, the reformatting to the World Championship, going to the Swiss stage, fearless drafts slowly being introduced, and now these sweeping changes, I feel like a lot of them are still listening to what the fans wanted, especially these format changes in terms of the big international events, getting a third international event, I know, there's going to be some growing pains merging all these regions together. I mean, if you're just straight up losing two LCS and four CB LOL teams from the league, that's a big impact as well. And especially the Asia Pacific, eight teams total is what they're uh, going for. And I mean, there were like 30 teams in these different regions. So everything is really being condensed, which is obviously going to be tough on a lot of organizations. It is one of the kind of footnote points. And I think important that they acknowledged it and can and you know contained it within the announcement of these moves but still kind of almost sweeping it under the rug just a little bit type of situation was mentioning the lack now of tier one teams going down so many in such a, a, a fell swoop here from these changes they acknowledged that they didn't think 
that what was going on, what environment was around for esports was enough to sustainably support that many tier one teams. Now, that type of statement, that type of conclusion, I think there's a lot of people that could go through and find individual cases, individual statistics and numbers that are going to counteract that and whatnot. But I think overall, given what we have seen with video games as a whole, never mind just the esport aspect of it, trying to consolidate, trying to find where we can put these big pieces so they are still getting the proper resources to support and make a product that is entertaining and engaging for people to be with, but also make sure that you are doing it sustainably is important. I'm just picturing all these LCK and LPL teams seeing all this news. Everyone's panicking, freaking out. They're scrolling going, okay, one more international event to win. Cool. <laughs> it basically has no effect other than obviously the split uh, formats changing for these actual top, top regions in China and Korea. Yeah, but I think that they are absolutely thrilled to see another international event get added to the schedule, another chance to prove yourself, to get those bragging rights over the other region and say you are the dominant force out there on the Summoner's Rift. Absolutely a big win for them. They're just trying to make sure they guarantee Faker doesn't retire because they say, oh, look, there's a new tournament you've never won. It didn't exist before. Uh, another another chance to add another hundred dollar aspect to the, the hall of legends bundle oh, for him. Yeah. There it is. a custom recall with the new uh spring split trophy championship whatever name they come up with it's definitely <laughs> going to be better than that but very exciting times it makes it almost sad that you got to come back to reality for this rest of this year and it's just the normal stuff oh man it makes everything else just feel so bland, knowing what is in store, what type of temperatures we're kicking things up to, both domestically with these new conferences and things like that, as well as on the international stage, setting up for it and with the scheduling. A little bit tough, but it's made a little bit easier because we are diving right back into games very soon. And at least we're heading towards Worlds. They didn't announce this in January or something where you have to go through the whole year waiting for this but very exciting times and we're going to obviously be getting a whole lot more information about all these changes as we transition towards 2025 but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you on that flippity flip